glad you could rejoin us. I just knew you would. Alan Biggs welcoming you back to uh, this Thursday's Talking Sheffield with a sporting flavour. Uh, James Gregg is about to take us round the houses where sport is concerned in the area. Steve Ellis is going to talk more about his career as a snapper, as we say in the business, rather than photographer. And Mel Stone, best conversations during the break, has just been telling us about how he once had to iron the, sh the shorts of a Sheffield Wednesday player. When That's he was right. A, a pro who was that? Mick Pickering. Yeah, I had his shorts and clean his boots and only because I, I needed a, a nice Christmas present. Uh, so that's why I used to look after me. So you used to be tipped at Christmas. Yes, bar. absolutely. And players had like it was almost like, like a fagging system, like in well, public schools. I had the worst ones. Me, I had Mick Pickering who were the, who were the best, mm. and then I had a guy called Jeff Johnson, yeah. who I didn't ask him for anything because he'd probably just give me <laughs> some fist. And then I got the tightest two players ever, which were Roger Wilde and Chris Turner, <laughs> who would never, never. In fact, they only breathed in. That's how tight they was. I know them both. <laughs> and the, the older centre five yeah. both of them, they tight as anything. Yeah. So I never, never got anything yeah. from them. I'll have to get Roger Wilde in. We'll ask him about <laughs> that. Ask him, definitely. But ironing, ironing shorts, I've never shorts, heard of yeah. any, uh, anything Mick, like that before. Yeah, yeah. He had yeah. to... Even even now, when you see him, he's immaculately dressed. Well, and, was, yeah. and character, great guy. Do you iron so. your shorts? I was going to say, do you still iron stuff now, Mel? Or? No. no? <laughs> you say you could iron my trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he so iron trousers? <laughs> I've got a wife at home to do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're not allowed oh, to say that. Like that. I've not been married 30 years, I can't. Yeah, the protest we're going to get in the <laughs> town. 30 I, I, years. I've got to put the record straight. I do all our ironing at home. I, that's just to cancel out your own goal. <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> James, Good James, stuff. what's going on? Well, it's a really busy weekend as usual. Sheffield sporting scene, it's, there's always stuff going on, isn't there? We'll, we'll start with our football league clubs. It's been a relatively poor week for both of our football league clubs. We've had Sheffield Wednesday, lost 3-0 at the hands of Wolves, and Sheffield United just a few miles away from Molyneux, grinding out a one-all draw at Walsall. Um, slightly disappointing, we can right a few wrongs this weekend. Blades host Port Vale at 3pm Bramall Lane on Saturday as Wednesday just travel short trip to Rotherham for the South Yorkshire Derby to face struggling Rotherham United I know that Stuart Gray is keen to, um, uh, to, to for the Wednesday to finish the season strongly aren't they Mel yeah, yeah. <laughs> well Rotherham. it's going to be a difficult game uh, yeah. it's a little derby yeah. uh, usual not much football played yeah. um, but you know, they've got a, a manager who's a, a crackerjack to me yeah. uh, in Evans. Um, you know, <laughs> he, he just dives in there. Uh, he gets the, the team playing football and getting the, the ball forward. But I think he might be one of the, 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 the managers what might suffer a, an heart attack or something like that, Alan, because well, how he gets himself worked up. And he doesn't get himself worked up with the players. He gets himself worked up with the fourth official. Yeah. Mm. You know, and, and the linesman and... You know, he's, I think he's just got to calm down a little bit, but it's yeah. in his nature, you know, he gets the best out of his players, and that's how he is. He is a character, and for all of, you know, we, we can identify with what you've said, two promotions, back-to-back -back uh, promotions. Uh, you can't take that off your CV, You can cannot. You? Right, it's fantastic. His, his record is remarkable. Fantastic. You know, and he's, clearly he's pressing the right buttons well, there. Uh, absolutely. Now, they're, they're six points off the relegation. Now, yeah. you know, if they get beat on Saturday, and I think it's Wigan play somebody at home. You get the yeah, feeling you know, that the, the, the Sheffield Wednesday match is a real needle game for him in some ways, and he, he very much taps into that. Keenness of the rivalry, I think, quite deliberately. Well, he's a, for this he's, he's a mad Scot Scottish guy, isn't he? <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? Well, he's very passionate about it. He was linked very heavily with the well, Wednesday job. He was linked very heavily with the Wednesday job. I mean, this uh, would be the. And I, you, the rumour has it he would have been keen to, to yeah. take it. The reaction was very anti from Al's fans on, on social media. Yeah. yeah. You know, human nature being what it is, I think he might tap into that. Or, but there you go. That, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. It's, it's, it's going to be, it's um, going to be a tough, tough, tough test. A manager who's got another good record is Ryan Hindley at Hallam. However, they've suffered mm. two defeats this week. Uh, they lost 2 0 to Shirebrook last Saturday and to Botsford Town on Tuesday night as well. But they've got um, uh, a chance to sort of put their record straight again. They host Stafford Rangers on Saturday at um, Sandygate. 
Um, Non-league football is you know, it's something that's rather prominent and we'll come on to that, I'm sure, after this. Because um, I know yeah. you want to talk about that, don't yeah. you, Mel? Um, yeah. Definitely a big fan of non-league football. Boston she United. Sheffield FC, they had a massive surprise result. They beat Market Drayton 6-1. That came from wow. absolutely nowhere on Tuesday night. Good one. Um, yeah, so good luck to them as well. They've got a week off this weekend. Sheffield Steel as well. Last weekend, they did half the job. They beat Coventry on Saturday. They travelled to Cardiff on the Sunday. But they lost 6-3, and that was after beating them 11-0 midweek as well. You can't believe it. It's just so, such a strange game, ice hockey. But they've got a chance to win the title. Um, Brayhead clan, who were top of the league, they lost uh, to Edinburgh, who were actually bottom of the league. Shock result. So Steelers, they've got two games left. On Friday night, they play against Nottingham Panthers and against Cardiff Devils again on Saturday. Final two games of the season. If they get the job done, the Motor Point Arena will be absolutely rocking on Saturday, but I'm sure that the Nottingham Panthers will be keen to burst the Steelers' bubble on oh, Friday. Oh, what a heck of a game that's going to be. And good luck, uh, Steelers. Uh, I saw them beat Coventry uh, last Saturday, yeah. and it was good to meet uh, Jared Adams, the, mm. the coach, and one or, one or two of the players down there. Great atmosphere and spirit there. And it's so intensive. Uh, I think four fixtures in a week, four huge mm. fixtures, all spread apart, miles I, apart. I can't get my head around ice hockey. I used to cover it for the start, and... You go down there and they can win 12, 13 nil, and you said to a you said to a fan, "Did you enjoy that?" And they'd go, "Well, no, not really. There was no fights." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, 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 they've won yeah. twelve. You know, That's I just right. I, don't, I I could never understand. Well, I was disappointed last Saturday. It was a routine two nil home win over. There were no fights. Not even no, a suggestion no, no. of a fight. Yeah. Well, I, I remember Tommy Plummer when Tommy Plummer used to play that, and I I said to Tommy, "You know, when you fight, do you mean it?" Yeah. And yeah. he went, what do you think? We yeah. don't play with each other. We, we mm. want to hurt each other. Yeah. Because that gets us revved up and it gets the fans revved up. Yeah. And I'm thinking, wow, yeah. that's, yeah. that's not bad. That. People yeah. have yeah. thought Serious. it was staged. People have thought but, it was staged. Uh, I used to cover it when, um, when it first started. There used to be like 12,000 people down in the yeah. arena and the yeah. atmosphere yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah. But I've, I've never really took to it. About, you know, no. but oh, well, each, each to his own. I'm mentioning Sheffield Steelers. Uh, very well done and best of luck to David Sims, uh, the voice of the House of uh, Steel, who's been mm. in this, this studio, who at this very moment is doing a walk of 88 miles from his home in Birmingham up to Sheffield in time for, yeah. the, for, for, for the next game. And he's, you know, he's, I think he's only 20 or so miles off now, and he's doing it in aid of Sheffield, uh, Sheffield's Western Park uh, Cancer Hospital, and do support him on that, please, if you get the opportunity. He has a Just Giving page, Just Giving uh, forward slash David Sims. Yeah. Uh, support him on that enterprise. Thanks, James. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, I was carry on. Oh, I was just going to say. the scores. Sorry. The latest scores. Yeah. Oh, well, sorry. Okay. I was going to say that. I think that's kaput, your accumulator. Now. I think you're I'm right. Sorry yeah. about that. It's not. Too, I've got another four to go later on. <laughs> All right. Well, we can check those later on. Thank All you. Right. Oh, uh, I was going to say, Sheffield Eagles, Mark Aston, really pleased with their start. Four wins from five. Great start to their season. They're third in the table. They've got a Challenge Cup game against Oldham on Saturday. Another team that's third, Sheffield Tigers Rugby Union. Uh, that's a great prequel if you want to go up to Dormore and watch them play against Huddersfield. Field on Saturday, great prequel to the Six Nations grand finale this weekend mm. as well. And finally, we'll finish off Nick Matthew. He gets underway in the Canary Wharf Challenge, which starts in London on Monday. He's written a Sheffield Telegraph common column, sorry, about what a great venue that is and how accessible that is for fans as well. So good luck, Nick, and get the job done. He's won four times there. Hopefully, he can make it number five. Yeah. Phenomenal man. I'll have to get him back in again. He Absolutely. did remarkably well when he did come in. There was a foot of snow and he still got in. He did. Which was a terrific effort. And then he won four weeks in a row after that. Must he have, did. Must have been your workout it, that you gave the, him Alan walking down to Door Station. I the, think uh, it was, yeah. I think it was, yeah. I tweeted him as much and he didn't deny it. Uh, so, he, uh, how much have you lost tonight then uh, on the. I've not lost much. Uh, no. About tenner. 15 quid, that's yeah. so You long. can afford to buy me a pint back then, can you? No, I'm waiting for the pint from you for my <laughs> fee. How's that? <laughs> All right, that will definitely be forthcoming. OK, let's have a look at this point. One or two more uh, pictures from the Steve Ellis archive. Steve maybe can talk about and remind us uh, what we're looking at. They're going to come up on screen. Yep. 93? 93, uh, Sheffield, all Sheffield semi-final at Wembley. Yeah, what a fantastic um, day that was. That was incredible, that picture. Was, it was on actually right on the halfway line, and that's when uh, Wembley had the fences up. Uh -huh. So I'd got my camera poking through the fence 
trying to catch those two. Fantastic. I mean, and it'd that, be interesting that. to see where those two fans are now. Yeah, and how old they are. And yeah, yeah. Really. You, know, you captured the day there. Yeah, that, 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 that picture, I just think, summed up the day. What was great about it was that, OK, there was an intense rivalry. Yeah. But as I remember, it passed without any major yeah, yeah. incident. And uh, do we take yeah. our football a bit too seriously, Mal, these days, or what? No, um, I, everybody loves the football. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're passionate about it. Sheffield Wednesday, Sheffield United. There should be Rotherham, rivalry. Donny, bon but does it Absolutely. border onto hatred sometimes? That's yeah, what I, I think. I think you're right. Um, well, you know, no I, I, that, I, don't, sure. I don't like... You know, when you see all these hooligans and fighting and, you know, you, you see innocent people get hurt. Um, you know, I were downtown a couple of weeks ago and when Millwall was at Rotherham and some Millwall fans came into Sheffield and, and they were fighting and innocent people were getting hurt. Out. Um, you know, there's a, there's a way to keep it nice and yeah. to be aggressive. Yeah, there's yeah. a nice aggressive. The, the thing about that game was as well that I still maintain... If we hadn't played Sheffield United in that semi-final at Wembley, I think we could have won one of the cup. cup that was our sort of cup final at yes. Wembley. Yes. The, 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 I never thought I would say it, but the two finals afterwards were almost an anti-climax. Yeah. Yes. The, the Arsenal. Uh, it was yeah. the year of the Arsenal. Um, I mean, I remember the celebrations on the pitch after we beat Sheffield. It were yeah. incredible. Yeah. But I think the semi-finals. <laughs> what, what, you play at Wembley now. The semi-finals. I don't. I, I, I'm not into it at one bit. You know, no. I think it should be, you know, halfway, and then the final at Wembley. But it got introduced <laughs> because of the massive demand well, for tickets, yeah. and oh. Elland Road was originally yeah, Sheffield, well, yeah. wasn't it? That's so right, yeah. Holds 40-odd thousand yeah. for yeah. the two Sheffield yeah. clubs. Really bizarre. Um, so that, that it was forced to go down there, quite, quite rightly so, in my view. Yep. Your career, Mel. Uh, great <laughs> career. Jack Charlton signed you. Howard Wilkinson was a, another influence so different from Jack? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, Jack, Jack was a character. Um, you know, he, he, he used to come training with a fag and he, he was amazing, amazing guy with flat cover. He used to take free kicks with, with a pair of shoes on, not, not football boots, and put it in the top corner. <laughs> yeah. And I would, were totally different, you know. I, um, I was on holiday and, um, you know, my dad rang me up and said, Howard Wilkinson's got the job. So I said, who? <laughs> yeah. He said, Howard Wilkinson from Notts County. I went, OK, right, fine. So, obviously, we come back to pre-season. Howard, Howard took us in pre-season. You know, he got us fit. He got us organised. Yeah. And um, You saw some hills. Uh, we saw a lot of hills, honest yeah. to God. Uh, in fact, I've just took my training shoes in now to be uh, serviced. Yeah. I think they must have done about 300,000 miles. Uh, it must have been a shock to the system. Abs Howard absolutely. Um, but that's what it wanted at the football club at the time. It wanted somebody to go in there and say, right, this is how we're going to play. This is what we're going to do. We used to play five at bike when I was yeah. the, yeah, the manager. Tony, doing... Tony Cunningham was up front, the that's big strong right. man in big that strong. promotion season. Yeah, but everybody, you know, we used to play five Super back. Fit, two, two wing backs, myself and Bo Nigel Worthington. <laughs> Three centre halves. Now they're all doing it. Yeah. Howard did that mm. at Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. But we were we were saying that well, people used to call us get boot the ball, yeah. get the ball the forward ball it's quick. That. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But yeah, I would come in and yeah, did fantastic. You know? By this time, you were the flying pig, and you graduated to Zico in honour of the great uh, Brazilian star, or Brazilian star is honoured to you that he should be. That's right. Linked, you know whatever. <laughs> uh, why the flying pig? Where did that the come flying from? pig was uh, Jack Charlton again. Uh, we were playing down in London, and um, again, I was wanting to go for a bet, and we had to go meet at Hillsborough for, I think it were about twelve o'clock or something like that. So I've gone to the bookies, and as I've come out of the bookies, a car has blocked me in. Right. So I couldn't get out. <laughs> so I've drove. I've finally got out. <clears throat> I've come out, gone to Hillsborough. The coach has gone. Big Jack's just turned around to Frank Ashton at the time when he when he used to help out down there. So I get us in his car and we're driving down the M1. The coach pulls over, I get us on the bus, we go down the QPR. Friday we're having something to eat in the hotel. And I think it was Gary Megson who left some food. And I saw the food and I thought, oh, my old man <laughs> used to say, never waste anything. Yeah. I've got five brothers and three sisters, so we had a big right. family. And I saw this food here and I thought, I'm going to have that. So I picked the food up and started eating it. And Big Jack came round and he went, flying pig. 
So I went, what, what? He said, you're going to be a flying pig. <laughs> and that's, and that's how it just started, yeah. flying pig. Yeah. Uh, so it just started from that. And then obviously it built on and built on. And then I'd got long curly at the time and I scored a couple of free kicks. And the, the, the Wednesday fans were, were brilliant. They just started to call me Zico, yeah. which were... Far uh, more fitting. Absolutely. I think that as well. <laughs> I think that as well, pal. <laughs> so, promotion with Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, you, you work with uh, Jack Charlton. I remember you being sold by Ron Atkinson very soon after he came in. <clears throat> That's right. Because I remember him telling me about it at yeah. one lunchtime, saying, well, we've had an offer for, for Mel. Well, at the time, it, w it was Peter Eustace. Um, before that? Before, and yeah. he'd agreed to sell me to Glasgow uh, Rangers. Before Ron came in? That's right. So, obviously, uh, Ron had come in, and um, I wanted to leave the club. I wanted yeah. to play in Europe. Um, and I thought at the time, Chef, I wasn't, we weren't doing it at Sheffield Wednesday. They needed somebody in there to, to spend some money and get, get, get the players what were needed at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I moved to Rangers for £850,000. And obviously Big Ron, he didn't, he didn't want me to go. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I went. But you still wanted it. Even still though wanted. Ron coming in promised to change the outlook of the club. He did. Spending money. He did. He, he did, did, and he certainly did. He did. And Leeds United, uh, sorry, Glasgow Rangers, you were there for a short time, you win the Scottish I won the Scottish, scored three goals up there, won the Scottish, played in a, a cup final, uh, the old firm cup final. We got yeah. beat 1-0, Celtic beat us 1-0. I think it was Joe Miller who scored. Um, amazing. You and know, then Howard can... comes knocking again, Leeds well, United. Howard, uh, the phone rang and uh, it was on Atkinson. So I said, Who, who's messing about, you know, yeah. at something like that, and put the phone down. And then it rang again. He said, it's Ron Atkinson, you're up for sale. And I said, no, I'm not up for sale. I've got a four-year contract at Rangers. He said, I'm telling you, you're up for sale. Uh, do you want to come back to Sheffield Wednesday? I didn't and, know this. Yeah. It's in uh, your book, obviously. Yeah, yeah, and I said, well... I've forgotten. I'll speak to uh, Graeme Souness. Yeah. Uh, the next day. So I put the phone down, went to Graham Soonis, uh, me and my wife went. Graham Soonis said, do you like it up here? I said, yeah, we love it. We've just got, we've just bought an house up there. We've just got us kids in, in school. Uh, he said, don't worry about it. Went back home the next day, the phone rings. Trevor Francis right. at QPR. Oh. Again, thought it's somebody were messing me about, put the phone down, stop messing about. Mm. Trevor Francis, QPR. Yeah. It rang again. He said, look, do you want to come down to uh, QPR? I said, well, you know, I've got four years left at, uh, at Rangers. Soon I said, everything's fine. He said, no, you're up for sale. As I put the phone down, Howard Wilkinson rang me. I'm thinking, is this a joke or, Everybody you know, what is going? Sale, apart from yeah. you. Apart from me and my wife, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I went down to QPR. As I'm driving down to QPR, my phone rings. It's Howard. Don't do anything silly. On your way back, we want you to come in in an hotel in Nottingham, come and speak to myself and Bill F Father Bayou yes. at, at, the, at the Leeds at that time. Managing director. Yeah. I always says, we're going to win the league. I'm going to fetch some good players and we want you to be part of it. And I just, to be wanted again, I thought, yeah, it's yeah. nice that. And um, you knew him. You knew what I knew, I, I, knew I, I, I've I worked with him a long time and hey, listen, we won the second division and the yeah. first division with him. So uh, everything went well. Fantastic memories. But then what's little known is that you, you moved on and finished your career at Boston United between 94 and 96. You actually managed Boston. You play a manager there. That's right, I was, yeah. Um, How did you feel Well, I had, uh, I had a, a guy called Ron Reed. You, yes. You know Ron. Well, he was in last week. Oh, well, Ron. He was sitting where you are last yeah. week. Yeah, he was, yeah. Great yeah. guy. Absolutely a fantastic yeah. guy. A lot of respect Agreed. for him. I knew the non-league system. Um, I had not known a lot about it. Obviously, we were playing for Leeds and Rangers and Sheffield Wednesday in England. And uh, I asked Ron to, to come as my assistant. And he said, no problem, which Ron had already worked there before anyway. Yeah. And we went down there, got the job. Um, first season we were there, we finished fourth. We had a good season. And then <clears> the second <throat> season, we finished second. We should have gone up. Uh, but um, the chairman... Um, forgot to, to send uh, all the information regarding the finances of the football club uh, into the FA uh, on a certain date. Oh. So, we, unfortunately, we didn't go up. It sounds like Boston. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, I think um, John Blackwell got the blame for it, I think, which uh, he's the secretary, so he, he, will, he will 
taking the, the blame for everything. Oh. Um, so we left. I left there, and um, I got I got approached to uh, to manage Stalebridge Celtic. Um, we were second from bottom when I went there. Um, I did say to the chairman, "I'll get you out of the league," and I did. We got relegated. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that so, was coming. So that didn't last long, Alan. Um, you know, I, I left there. Uh, you didn't fancy lingering as a manager? No, going no. Um, I think it, the non-league system is it's very hard, you know, because you've got players who train. You, we were training just twice a week. Yeah. You know, and I were, me and Ron were having phone calls on a Saturday morning saying, I can't get. Obviously, they'd been out on a Friday and had some booze yeah. down them and, you know, they couldn't play. So it, it, yeah. it, it is difficult. Uh, yeah. Obviously... Now the non-league, most of them are full time, yeah. Yeah. which is you know a lot of, a lot of money's coming into them. And uh, but no. Um, what are you doing now? I'm not doing anything now, Alan. I'm, you uh, are. You're sitting here. Well, I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm sat here talking to some lovely people and talking to a lot of audience out there, which yeah. is great. Um, it's fantastic to see you. Uh, I've got uh, ill health. I've uh, I nearly died about eight or nine years ago. Um, I got deep vein thrombosis and mm. I got a clot good to me lung. Uh, I say I'm on me antidepressed tablets, I take warfarin daily, mm. uh, take all sorts. But you're uh, looking well, loads. do you mind me saying? I think you're looking well. Uh, uh, you're always I, do, I do outside, inside I'm rotten, but mm. you always have a smile on your face, mm. always. Listen, Don't. you're great company. Thanks a lot, Alan. Uh, Thank we, we, we've had some great, great time here with you, uh, and you. It'll, it'll spill over across the road. <laughs> One or two more pictures. Steve, you, right. I mean, you've had a career that people would dream about as, yep. a, as a photographer. Was that yep. always your ambition as a kid? Not really. I, 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 I started in 91 with a star as a, as a junior. Right. That's um, promotion. Oh. From the third division. From the third Terry Curry. <laughs> Terry Curry. Um, I think that was 78, 78 79. Yeah. yeah. Mick Pickett. Big Jack. Look at that. That's Hursty. One of uh, Hursty at Bramall Lane celebrating a goal. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> that actually, yeah. yeah, it's a great photo, even as a boy. Hey, look at that. <laughs> oh, it's Mr. Power. Di Canio. Seconds leads. Who was a ticking time bomb. That's a, that, that's a superb action shot. We've seen that one already. Seen that that's one. Uh, Derek, Derek Dooley. <laughs> now, that, I, I love that picture because... Rare. Uh, Ron had this <laughs> yeah. um, sort of persona as champagne and lifestyle, but he, he loved nothing better than... Than playing five a side. Yeah. And under uh, there, he's got some. Um, uh, under his shorts, he used to wear bin liners. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> and he, 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 he was to sweat. deadly sweat serious. Sweat with, yeah. Deadly yeah. serious with the five a side. Yeah. And then he loved nothing better than a pot of tea afterwards. Loved his tea. Who was the best favourite manager that you've worked with there? Uh, favourite manager? Well, there's, there's been some. We've had some big names, haven't we? Yeah. I Trevor mean, Francis I, was another Trevor big Francis. name. Trevor Francis. I mean, I, I, I always think that there's two sort of big ifs. Mel was talking about Mel. Uh, Mel was talking about sorry when Howard went to Leeds. Mm. If Howard hadn't gone to Leeds, would would we have finished up with the Championship side? And when Ron went to Villa, yeah. we were on the verge then of having a. A seriously good side. Yes. Well, it went on to be a seriously good side under yeah. a different manager. Uh, under under it? Trevor, yeah. It did. But that's ifs, isn't it? It, it is. It is. Listen, thank you so much, uh, Steve and Mel and James. And if you've missed this, if you've only just come in, and do yourself a favour, watch the repeat uh, at 11 p.m. tonight, and you'll hear Mel talking from the heart about some of his experiences off the field. We do thank you for sharing those uh, with us. Thank you for being there. Next week, a, a guest from Sheffield Sharks Basketball, among others. Thanks for your company. We'll see you then. Bye.